What is happening, cupcakes? The other day, I was just sitting at my desk trying to get some work done. You know, the huge. When I got an email from Xtool, you've got mail. They wanted to know when I was planning on reviewing their new sexy 40 watt diode laser. I told them I was busy, but I would get to it as soon as I could. Of course, I'd already taken a look at the specs. Eight times 5.5 watt laser compression, built-in air assist dual fans for faster and more efficient cooling, and it boasted a 52% faster engraving speed. I mean, this thing is beefy, but you guys just want to know if it'll cut through a two by four, right? But before I review anything, I'm gonna need the right pair of goggles. All right, now that we've got some cool shades, let's run this thing through its paces. So this unit, like the 20 watt, comes in Iron Man red and, well, that color. Who doesn't want the Iron Man red one? And for comparison's sake, we're gonna be comparing the 40 watt to his little brother, the 20 watt. Shampoo is better. Conditioner is better. I keep getting folks asking me where they can find a power and speed grid to run on their laser to test different materials. Because you know you should be running one of these on every new material so you know your power speeds up, right? Anywho, so I made one of these up. I will link it down below in the description. You can download it for free. And honestly, this will probably only work for like the 20 watt to 40 watt range. So if you guys want something for the 10 and the five, let me know and I can make another one up for that. While we were running some of those tests on the lasers, uh, I just wanted to give you a couple of the nerd facts. Biggest question that I get asked is how big is the laser spot? Cause it is larger. And the answer to that is it is 0.1 millimeter by 0.15 millimeters. So I wanna say the 20 watt is 0.1 millimeters by 0.08 millimeters. So you're definitely probably looking at a little bit less detail and some really fine detailed work, but we'll check that out in a minute. With the 40 watt module, you will also have to swap out the gantry to handle that beefier load. Cause we know who likes beefier loads, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so since you're swapping out the gantry, the next question I get a lot is, will you be able to swap out old laser heads with the new gantry? And the answer is yes and no. Say hi to Steve. Look guys, it's Cowboy Steve. Laser heads that came with any of the D1 Pro models will swap out with this gantry. I do not believe the laser heads that come with the regular D1s are compatible with the new gantry. What that means is if you have the old D1 non-Pro, if you wanna upgrade to the 40 watt unit, you're gonna have to buy a D1 Pro frame too. If you do that, you might wanna look into buying like the five or the 10 watt frame because you'll get a better detail because you'll have that smaller laser dot and then you'll have the cutting power of the big boy. Of the big boy. So we have the 20 watt on the left and the 40 watt on the right. As you can see, the 40 watts put in the 20 watt to shame in the cutting category. So we're running 100% power, 13 millimeters per second cutting on three millimeter birch plywood. Whereas over here on the 20 watt, we're running almost three times as slow as five millimeters per second, 100% power. Now, as far as the engraved test goes, I don't think this looks really great on wood. Um, I think it's hard to tell the detailing and whatnot. Obviously the 40 watt is going to burn darker at the same speeds than the 20 watt does. But um, what I figured it would do is some white tiles to get to really look at the detail. So here we have a speed and power grid for the white tile method. Here I'm using Enduramark charcoal glass as my marking agent. And if you look, we're getting pretty good darks even all the way up to 130 millimeters per second. Previous testing on the 20 watt, I did a little Captain Jack Sparrow here and this was done at 100 millimeters per second, 60% power. Some other results, this is quarter inch MDF. Looks like we got up to seven millimeters per second at 100% power. Uh, and just to give you an idea, there's no burning on the back. Next up, we have half inch ply. You gotta look really close because I did really small ones. But right here, we ended up cutting through. Um, we ended up cutting all the way through half inch ply, one pass, five millimeters per second uh, at both 95 and 100% power. Three quarter inch pine, three passes, uh, five millimeters per second, 100% power. I did cut 
through a two by four, but I wouldn't recommend it. As you can see, it kind of caught on fire in here. And I did have the fire detection system turned off. I would not recommend this. And before we get to the detailed stuff, um, let's just take a look at the don't likes. Number one, and probably the biggest one, is that this is a 40 watt laser that is not in an enclosure. It is just out in the shop. Lasers have been getting more and more powerful and it's just something to note that it is really easy to catch something on fire with this. The X-Tool does have the fire detection, so I will give them that. But I would say just having this running in the shop and because of the design, which we'll get to in a second, I have to take the guard off a lot of times. There is laser light firing in your shop. And what a lot of people don't realize is that if you're sitting across your shop or you're sitting next to the unit and you can see that blue out of the corner of your eye, you're still getting some of that laser refraction into your eye. So just make sure you got yourself a pair of cool shades whenever the thing's running. Also pay very close attention when your kids are around. Next up is the light shield. I do love the fact that they made this magnetic and it just pops on and off now and you don't have to like screw it on and off. But an issue I have with this and the 20 watt is that the laser has to be so close to the material that a lot of times I want to take this off. I don't want this guard to hit the material or the things I have holding it down and shift the piece. I, I love this little deal, by the way. This little guy that holds your, holds your wiring in, that's awesome. My last complaint is the way this connects. Now we're talking that you're going to have multiple heads for one laser. This needs to be a better connection, like an easier on-off situation where you're not constantly kind of pulling at these little tiny guys right here. Because, I, I mean, it doesn't take much to pop one of those guys out. All right, and here's our tile comparison. Now, these both look pretty good. This is a 20 watt, this is a 40 watt. 40 watt we did at 30% power, 130 millimeters per second. The 20 watt was 100 millimeters per second at 60% power. Well, this one's a little darker. Maybe you could darken this one up, but you can just see more detail in the 20 watt. Like if you look closely at the guns, if you look closely at Kiona's dew there, you can just see a little bit more detail. Now, this still looks really good, but I would say, if you're going for something where you're going like very, very, very fine detail, you're still gonna probably wanna have a 20 watt or even the five or 10. I mean, I dig it, it's, it's cool. It's cool that we've gotten to the point in innovation where we can run, what, 13 millimeters per second to cut through three millimeter ply. I'm not gonna use this to cut a two by four, right? That's for, that's, that's just to see if it'll do it. But for doing what normal laser operation does, and that's pretty cool that we've got almost a three times increase in speed. Now, if this video has piqued your interest in the 20 watt, watch this video right here.